Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Once again, we have the intrepid JJ here from ASUS. JJ, thank you very much for coming by. Thank you for having me. And today we're going to be talking about the latest member of the Tough series of motherboards from ASUS. This is the Sabertooth X79. Features, of course, the X79 chipset. Also the 2011 socket for the latest Intel Sandy Bridge E processors. Now, uh, we're going to go over this board in general, but uh, for starters, the tough series of motherboards, and this Sabertooth more specifically, are aimed at people who want long-term reliability as well as stability in their components. And uh, what else do you think you could add to that, JJ? Yeah, well, you nailed uh, two critical points. I mean, definitely for us, a focus on all ASUS motherboards is reliability and stability. Um, but with TUF, it's taking it even further. It's adding validation to those two levels, both internally in terms of the testing that we do to qualify the board, um, but it's also in the components and how we chose, choose those components and validate those components. Extending that further, we also find that TUF is really focused behind users that want a higher level of control and monitoring to the board. So this could be... Um, you know, that they want to be able to know kind of specific temperatures, specific parts of the board so that they can better optimize airflow, so that they can configure positioned layout inside the chassis more ideally, different parameters like that. So Tough is really about that kind of user that's looking just for the most finite control in terms of monitoring and then configuring the board based off of that monitored information. And then, of course, that parent uh, reliability, durability, and, and validation to go along with it. So you have a huge array of sensors across the board so you can uh, determine the temperature not just of, say, your CPU, uh, but basically different monitoring points across the board? That's correct. There's actually on this motherboard 12 hardware sensors that are sprinkled out through the entire motherboard, and then they're accessible through a special piece of software that we have with an AI Suite 2 called Thermal Radar. So it's essentially just like a radar map um, that provides you information for like what the temperature might be in approximation of PCIe 1, PCIe 2 for the VRM, for the front USB 3, for the serial ATA 6. And that's important because depending on the chassis configuration, uh, the type of GPU layout that you might choose, uh, your overclocking parameters, all these things are going to be affecting the ambient temperature that you have in terms of zones on the board. So here you can pretty much see all this information. And then on top of that, the really cool part is then we have special algorithms built in to the software and the firmware controller that can dynamically adjust all your fans that you have connected based on the information being fed from thermal radar. So if you take advantage of, let's say, all the fan headers that we have here that has to offer manual fan control, all of a sudden if thermal radar sees that there's a ramp up in heat here, it can automatically adjust the rotation policy of the CPU fans that maybe you have for like an H100 those two fans and then maybe also the VRM fan will make an adjustment but of course the fans down here at this bottom area aren't necessarily re realizing an increase in ambient temperature so they won't need an adjustment so you can manually define all those parameters or you can go to the default auto parameters that which will automatically track and adjust accordingly and heat being the general enemy of computer parts mm -hmm. that will allow you to of course have longer reliability for the board by keeping everything with an acceptable temperature levels. Yeah, you, and, you uh, nailed it on the head there. Going right along with that, let's continue with the certificate of reliability. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, all the components on here have been tested, so you get this uh, certificate of reliability along with your Sabertooth X79 motherboard, yeah. uh, which has all of your uh, components listed off here, as well as uh, integrated service technology listing and uh, the ser serial number. Yeah, so pretty much the focus of this uh, certificate is to help to denote that we have our tough components. So that comprises our tough capacitor, our tough choke, and our tough MOSFET. We're utilizing these new specialized ferret chokes, uh, which have a, a much better performance in terms of the amperage they can provide, as well as other inherent VRM performance benefits. Uh, the big thing that we want to do, though, and why we've done this continually with their certificate reliability, is that even though we do our internal validation and testing, we want the user to feel confident that these components aren't just rated by ASUS to be above the standard. They're also related uh, by the military specifications and validated by an ind independent laboratory in terms of saying they meet this criteria and this level of performance. So that's the idea behind the certificate of reliability included with each board. All right. Well, let's move on uh, a little bit more specifically about the board itself. Since this is an X79 board, mm -hmm. uh, we should... Uh, we, we wanted to also show, uh, JJ brought these in for all you guys at home. These are Corsair Vengeance DIMMs. We have currently all eight 
dim slots populated. Uh, they have this nice military olive coloring. Yeah, and, uh, th these are sold separately. We should yeah, mention they, that. Yeah, they are sold separately. But the cool things about these guys is that uh, outside of the match aesthetic that we worked with Corsair on, is that these guys actually not only run at DDR3 1600, but they run at a much lower voltage. So they match the theme of running about efficiency and cooling because these guys only run at 1.25 volts as compared to a lot of the other modules that might be 1.5 or 1.65. So they not only visually look great, but even from the performance and efficiency standpoint, work great with the board. And once again, reinforces our choice to go with an 8-dim configuration, which gives us a lot of flexibility taking advantage of the quad channel bandwidth of the Sandy Bridge E processor and also being able to do those cool things that we've discussed like RAM disks, RAM cache configurations while still having a lot of memory locally available for the OS. All right, and uh, now let's uh, go over a little bit more about the layout of the board. Uh, you got a lot of the uh, typical types of motherboard uh, front panel connectors you'd see down here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You've uh, got uh, pretty much just uh, four USB 2 connectors here. When we move over to our standard PCI connectivity here, we can see it's straightforward. We have full SLI support. So that's uh, full by 16 by 16 SLI or Crossfire. We've got the physical by 16, physical by 1, physical by 1, physical by 16, a legacy PCI slot. And then we've got one more physical by 16 slot. All right. Uh, you were also mentioning the fan headers that you guys have on the uh, X79 boards in general mm -hmm. uh, that have that, um, that basically fancier the better fan controller that's integrated to the board itself? That's correct. We have incorporated a new generation Super I.O. controller on the board, which essentially allows us to control um, the six fan headers that we have on the board. So within the UEFI or within the AI Suite 2 interface in the OS, the user can define the manual uh, target values, whether it's the maximum rotation or the minimum rotation and the target temperatures associated for each one of those headers in either one of those two environments, the UEFI or the operating system. Extending that further though, we then have something special. So going in concert with the six fan controls, right? That's already a lot of control and cooling that we offer on the board. But we have these two portions of the board, which is our new thermal armor system. So underneath each one of these two components, we actually have a heat sink assembly. So there's an actual heat sink, and then there's a, a fan which helped to actually provide cool air to that heat sink to better adequate uh, dissipation for that portion of the board. So here we've done it for the PCH. We can sometimes increase in temperature based in SLI or crossfire configurations and sometimes affect potentially the data throughput integrity of whatever's connected in terms of your serial ATA devices. For the VRM, we see that we actually have a VRM heat sink here and we have a centered heat pipe here at the top. Now this centered heat pipe actually goes into an actual physical heat sink assembly underneath this actual cover. Um, now this portion of the cover here will actually allow you to remove it and then you can place on the included fan and that flan would then blow over the actual heat sink assembly allowing you to have much more effective heat dissipation for the VRM especially if you overclocked it. With Tough we definitely segment it towards users that are looking for the best in overall stock operation but the board definitely has the chops to overclock and this type of configuration can also help to extend the reliability and durability um, of the overall platform. So these two parameters are also tied in with that thermal radar as we noted, so those two fans can also be controlled. So really this is the kind of the, the end all be all board when you're talking about control and configuration for cooling parameters and for fans. All right, and uh, we should not go without mentioning our uh, serial ATA connectors here of course. Correct. Very so important. On this side of the board here, as you noted, we've got the front USB 3 here, and then we step over into 8 serial ATA. So we have the standard 6 ports from the PCH, so 2 SATA 6G, and we have the 4 SATA 3G, and then we've got 2 more SATA 6G and our ASUS SSD caching implementation. So this is great because you could run a great flexible configuration like having maybe a 120 gigabyte SSD running on your primary SATA 6G connection, and then you could have maybe like a 2 terabyte hard drive with a smaller capacity SATA 6G SSD on the actual SSD caching configuration. But as we noted with our SSD caching implementation, ASUS doesn't place any restrictions on the actual capacity. So if you didn't want to use a 60 gigabyte, even want to go to 120 gigabyte, that could be utilized without any issues. All right, uh, shall we move on to the inputs and outputs? Yep. So looking over on the back plane, we can see that we've got the combo PS2 connection for keyboard or mouse. We've got the two USB 3 ports. These support the ASUS USB 3 Boost technology. We then also have a powered eSATA, SATA 6G connection, 1394 Firewire, two more USB 2 ports. We have the Toslink optical out connection, non-powered eSATA. Then we have the 
USB BIOS flashback button, which associates with this white USB 2 port, which when not in the USB BIOS flashback function will also serve as a standard USB 2 port. Two more, U excuse me, three more USB 2 ports, Intel gigabit native Ethernet, two more USB 3 ports, and then we have 7.1 audio. And that 7.1 audio also includes our new uh, Realtek 898 codec with the DTS Suite 2 Ultra PC package, which gives you the DTS Connect real-time encoding feature. All right, and uh, I think that just about wraps it up. That wraps it up, yeah. Pretty right. much uh, for somebody that's looking for a solid, great platform, whether it's an SLI or single GPU, I mean, the tough is going to get it done. All right, guys, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. JJ, thank you again for stopping by. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to see more tech videos, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can also check out JJ's videos on the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and we'll see you all next time.